Good morning. Today is Thursday, the 25th of March. We're here at 3B District Court in Centerville, Michigan. We're ready to begin our day. We have a number of arraignments on misdemeanor charges and some bench warrant arraignments. We're going to be pretty busy this morning. Good morning, Ms. Jackson. Good morning. Thank you. <laughs> I've got a couple. Yeah, all set. yeah, I couldn't remember if this was the day you were going to have a yeah, doctor's I appointment or something. I got a little beat up by a tree this morning. Oh, gee. Sorry to hear <laughs> My dog wrapped me around the tree. Good morning. Who am I speaking with? Hello. Hello. This is Judge Middleton. Who am I speaking with? Uh, you're speaking with Quincy Washington. All right, Quincy Jr. Uh, no, uh, just Quincy Washington. All right, let me give you a name here. Oops. Mr. Washington, you always have the ability to connect with video. Do you have it this morning? Uh, yes. Um, I just don't, I'm just not sure how to, how to work the Zoom. All right, well, stay where you are for a minute. I'm going to put you in the waiting room. We'll be beginning shortly. while this thing decides to just change the set setting. Hmm. It's hard when people are just on a telephone. This is all they see. Um, the rest of us see the talking head version from the other camera. Oh, I've got a customer in the conference room as well. Let's see who this is. Whoever set up the conference room, Doreen or Samantha, thank you for your help. Good morning, sir. Good morning. What's your name? Alan Graver. Good morning, Mr. Graver. Uh, you're gonna have to take your gum off before we start our proceeding. Thank you for coming into the court this morning. All right, you're in the right spot. I'm going to put you in the waiting room. All right, we're lining up all right. We have a lot of cases today, and we have quite a few that may need a translator. Here, let's see who Galaxy Note 10 is. Good morning.
Good morning, ma'am. Can you hear me? She's still trying to connect. We've got some other Galaxy people. Good morning, Galaxy A20. Can you unmute your mic? Good morning, sir. Can you hear me? Can you hear me, sir? It's our daily struggle. Hello. It's good morning, sir. This is Judge Middleton. Who am I speaking with? Robert Jones. Good morning, Mr. Jones. Let me give you a proper name here. Are you at work right now? No, I just left work. I just got home. All right, we'll be with you here in just a moment. I'm bringing other people in. Uh, let's see who iPhone is. This Galaxy Note is still struggling there. Oh, let me... All right, just stay where you are, Mr. Jones. All right. Put you in the waiting room. Hello? Good morning, sir. This is Judge Good Middleton morning. here at the court. What's your name? Uh, Quincy Washington. Oh, good, Mr. Washington. I thought I already had you in here, but. All right. Uh, Stay where you are. I've got a couple other people to bring in. Put you in the waiting room. Galaxy Note 10, are you able to connect yet? You're still struggling getting your sound set up. I've got uh, someone from... Um, Jeanette, we're going to have a full house this morning. I don't know. I, think I, I saw that. I have some I don't have information on, too, so that's not good. We'll, we'll find out. Cody Crane is here. He must be representing Carol Kochevar. We'll start with that one once we get everybody in. This poor lady, Galaxy 10, is struggling to get her sound connected. Good morning. I have a telephone number connected. Who am I speaking with? Robert Herman. Good morning, Robert Herman. This is Judge Middleton. Do you have the ability to do video? No, I don't. All right, well, stay right where you are. Well, it's 11.13, it's about a minute to showtime. And I think we've got everybody logged in. Uh, i got Kurt Richardson. And let's see who Cody Crane is for. Oh, I think that was Good my morning. Phone. Good morning, Mr. Richardson. Good morning, Good Mr. Crane. Uh, Mr. Crane, who are you here for this morning? Uh, Galaxy Note 10, ma'am, did you, we finally, can we hear you? Can you hear me? Ma'am? Apparently no. 
Uh, Galaxy Note 10. Can you hear me? Kurt, you're muted, but I assume you can hear me. You're here for Carol Coach. I can hear you. Yep, I am. Cody, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Who are you here for? We're here for Mario Lopez Hernandez. You should okay. be joining here shortly. And I, I did put a request in for Vivian Montero to uh, interpret. I don't know if that ever she, got. She's here. Good. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, I've got one last person I'm trying to identify, and uh, she's Galaxy Note 10, and she's not responding. Ma'am, can you hear me? You're jamming up the works. Apparently, you're not the entertainment tonight guy. Let me uh, get ready to go here. I still can't figure out who Galaxy Note 10 is. All right, let's bring everybody in. It'll be a free-for-all. I still haven't figured out who Galaxy Note 10 is. Um, turn your audio on, maybe. I may just remove her and never come back. She's here, but I don't know who she is, and she doesn't respond to anything. Good morning, everyone. This is Judge Middleton. I've got your mics on, so if you just please be quiet and listen while I give some opening instructions here. Um, I'm here at the court in Centerville. You are all here for an arraignment. The arraignment is the process where the judge tells you what you're charged with and asks you how you wish to plead to the charge. A couple people have counsel here this morning, others do not, but we're going to start with those. I will let you know that we are live on YouTube and we're on the Zoom platform and this is being recorded. And I'm here in the courtroom by myself running the Zoom feed and other things. But we're going to start with Mr. Kurt Richardson is here for Carol Kochevar. Ms. Kochevar, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. All right. Uh, this, there are two files here. File 21468FY and 462. In 468, it's alleged that on or about March of 2020, that you did embezzle $20,000 or more that is a felony. It's punishable by up to 10 years imprisonment. The other count, count uh, 21472, <clears throat> also alleges embezzlement more than $20,000. Mr. Kurt Richardson is here to appear on your behalf. What we do in felony cases is we set them for a pre-exam conference and then a preliminary examination. Mr. Richardson, uh, I haven't got your appearance yet, but I'm assuming it's on the way to the file. Um, in the normal course of events, the pre-exam conference date would be April 6th. Does that work for you? It's, it's possible if, we, if I could get the next week or whenever the next one is. I'll be out so of town. Pre-exam pre would be April 6th, and the prelim would be April 13th.
Judge, I don't know if I could get the next week if possible. All right, so you'd like the pre-exam on April 13th? That'd be great, thank you. <clears throat> All right, that shuffles which judge gets it, but I don't think that matters. Ms. Kochevar, you have a right to have this hearing within 14 days of your arraignment. Your attorney has asked me to adjourn it for a week, which would put it outside of that. Is that agreeable with you? Yes. All right, we'll set the pre-exam conference for April 13th at 9 a.m. And a preliminary examination, if needed, will be April 20th at 1 p.m. Ms. Kochevar, are you still on Fairchild Road? Yes. All right, now you've entered a plea of not guilty or I've entered one on your behalf. I want you to stay in contact with your attorney. If he already has not, he will be getting copies of the police report in each case and discussing this matter with the prosecutor. I can't see you, but I'm assuming that that's you I'm speaking with because you're represented by counsel. Um, Here you are. <laughs> all right. Uh, bond has been posted in each file. It's $5,000 PR. Bond is continued. All the bond conditions are in effect. And in effect both cases are set for March 25th. All right, Mr. Richardson, anything else we should do? Nothing further, Judge. All right, thank you. Thank you. Have a good uh, day. Yes. Carol? Yes. I'm removing you, and then you can talk with your lawyer later if you need to. Mr. Richardson, good morning to you. Thank you. All right, I had Vivian Montero here with us when I started, I can't see her right now. Cody, we may have to wait a minute. Yeah, I saw her, on <clears throat> I'm not sure where she was, but that's fine, Your Honor. Uh, Galaxy Note 10, we're struggling to get you connected. Can you hear me yet? Yes, we can hear you. Go ahead, Mario. Good morning. Good morning. Well, good morning, Mr. Lopez, just stay right where you are. Uh, I'm struggling with the lady Galer, uh, Galaxy Note 10. Um, can you hear me? See. Si. Yes. See. Si. No, Mr. Lopez, not no. you. You got two things going too, which is jamming things up. Um, well, good morning, Howard. Good morning. Uh, Cody, we're going to have to wait for Vivian to return to assist us. So let's uh, deal with some other people. Mr. Lopez, I'm going to put you in the waiting room because you're double dipping here. There's something going on with your phone. It is difficult when I have everybody hooked up at the same time. Mr. Graber, you're there in the conference room here at the courthouse. I do appreciate your driving here this morning to be connected. This is file 21542, People versus Laverne Graber. Mr. Graber, you've been charged with operating while intoxicated and uh, possession of alcohol by a minor. The more serious charge is the operating while intoxicated. That's a misdemeanor. It's punishable by up to 93 days in jail and a fine of up to $500. Carries six points on your driving record and requires that your license be suspended. The allegation is that you were driving a car on Fawn River Road uh, at about 5.30 in the morning on March 12th, that you were underage and you possessed alcohol and that you were intoxicated. Uh, 
this arraignment is the time and date for advising you of the charge. Let me tell all of you right now that when you are charged with a criminal offense, you're entitled to have an attorney to represent you. All you have to do is ask me and I can appoint an attorney for you at county expense. If you had a, an attorney, um, we would then set for the next stage in the proceedings. Ms. Jackson, do you have any plea offer in this case? Uh, no, I have nothing from anyone for anyone. All right. All right, Mr. Graber, what's your position here? Um, I plead not. I'd like to talk to an attorney before. I think that's probably why. I was going to advise you to do that. I'm going to show that you're pleading not guilty. Yes. Arraignment. I'm going to appoint an attorney. Mr. Lopez, you're still back um, and I'm going to set an attorney pretrial for Well, this is way longer than I'd like to go. Uh, we miss April 2nd because it's Good Friday. And then the 16th and the 23rd are just jammed up. And then we have judges training on April 7th. I'm going to set this all the way out for May 14th at 9 a.m. Are you still on... State Road 178 East, Walcottville. Um, yes. Do you have a phone? Yes. What's that? You want on the phone number? Yes, sir. Two six zero two one five seven eight nine four seven eight nine four. All right, we're going to send you the information regarding the attorney we will appoint to represent you. It's your obligation to call that attorney and make an appointment to discuss this with them. Because of several circumstances, it's adjourned much longer than I would like, all the way out to May 14th. Um, but there's a holiday, Good Friday, there's a vacation, there's judge training, so we don't have any Fridays for a while. So I do appreciate the fact that you drove all the way up here, me taking this matter serious. I don't know what you were doing at 5.30 in the morning. March 12th was a Thursday night into a Friday morning uh, out on Fawn River Road, but we'll explore that further. Your bond is continued. I want you to contact your attorney and make an appointment to discuss this with prior to the 14th of May. That May hearing will be by Zoom once again. If you do need to drive up here, you could do that and we'll put you in the conference room again. Or you can just dial in by Zoom like the other people on the feed have done here. Anyway, it will be by Zoom, either from here or from a computer or phone. Do you have any questions, Mr. Graber? Um, is my license suspended just for Michigan or Indiana? Not yet. You have an Indiana license. You haven't been convicted of anything. Let me take a look at your driving record. It says you had an out-of-state license in Indiana. You're not suspended in Michigan, uh, although you've got a lot of points for a young guy. Uh, and it says you had an out-of-state license. At this point, you haven't been convicted of anything. So you're accused, but not convicted. So they have not yet suspended your license in Michigan. I don't know what the status of your license is in Indiana, but it looks to me like you're valid. But you know, check your license. All right, sir, you're good to go. Thank you. All right, you can just leave. I'll just leave that room turned on in case we need it again. 
All right, uh, Mr. Crane, I'm going to attempt to bring your client in. He's got a telephone and a computer both on, so there's a feedback loop. Okay, and yeah, I'm I bring the, the woman with him, and uh, she said that they were only on a laptop, so I'm not sure what's going on over there. All right, well, we'll find out. For the rest of you, thank you for your patience. We have a lot of cases this morning. Once upon a time, you would have all come here to the courthouse. Mr. Jones, I see you have a legal assistant there with you. Uh, we'll ask her for some advice. Uh, you would have come to the courthouse and be sitting on the wooden benches waiting for your turn. Here we're doing it all virtually where you're all connected from home or work by phone or laptop. So I appreciate it, but we do have a dozen or more cases to deal with this morning. Uh, we have our interpreter, Vivian Montero, with us this morning. Good morning, Vivian. Good morning, Your Honor. Uh, let me get Mr. Lopez Hernandez. <clears throat> uh, well, Vivian, I might as well start right in with you. Would you state your name for the record, please? <clears throat> Vivian, Vivian Montero, Court Interpreter 18369. You raise your hand. You swear or affirm to the best of your ability you will translate these proceedings from Spanish into English and English into Spanish. I do. <clears throat> Since I'm losing my voice, I didn't do my analogy. Senor Lopez, buenos dias. Es usted Mario Benjamin Lopez Hernandez. Buen dia, uh, sí. Good morning, yes. Ms. Ms. Montero is going to translate for us. La señora Montero va a interpretar para nosotros. Or she likes to say interpret for us. Your lawyer, Cody Crane, is here with us. Su abogado, el licenciado Cody Crane, está aquí con nosotros. Señor... Lopez Hernandez, you've been charged with driving without a license ever applied. Señor Lopez Hernandez, el cargo que enfrenta es manejar sin licencia y usted nunca ha solicitado una. That is a misdemeanor. Es un delito menor. Punishable by up to 90 days in jail. Se conlleva una penalidad máxima hasta 90 días de cárcel. And a fine of up to five hundred dollars. You know, it's a multa hasta quinientos dólares. The driving record shows essentially you have no record. El según el registro de conducir, pues no demuestra ningún registro. There's nothing bad on it. No hay nada malo encima. You just don't have a license. Simplemente no tiene licencia. Ms. Jackson, is there any offer in this case? No. Licenciada, sorry. Uh, licenciada Jackson, ¿hay alguna oferta en este caso? I have no offers from anyone. I haven't no seen tengo any. ninguna oferta en ninguna parte. Mr. Zoom, what, uh, Mr. Zoom, Mr. Crane, what's your position here? Licenciado I'm Mr. Crane. Zoom, yes, sir. You can call me well, Mr. Sorry. <laughs> um, I, at this time, I would ask to have it set for a pretrial. I'm sure pretty not guilty at this time and give me a chance to talk to a prosecutor, see if we can figure this thing out. Bueno, le pido que, le pido que se posterga la audiencia para una preconsulta ante el juicio, eh, dándonos tiempo para ver si podemos resolver esto. I'm going to set an attorney pretrial. Voy a fijar una fecha para una preconsulta ante el juicio. Or April 9th. Para el 9 de abril. Let me look. Make sure I got that. Déjeme right. ver.
Yes, Friday, April 9th at 9 a.m. Sí, el viernes 9 de abril a las 9 de la mañana. Okay. Um, are you still living on East West Avenue in Fulton? Usted sigue viviendo sobre <coughs> la East West Avenida en Fulton? Sí. Yes. Do you have a telephone? Tiene un número de teléfono? Sí. Yes. What is it? ¿Cuál es? 269-503-3049. It is 269-503-3049. Thank you. Gracias. I suspect this is a circumstance where you can't get a license. Yo sospecho que esta es una circunstancia donde usted no puede obtener una licencia. Because you don't have lawful residency status. Uh, porque su situación migratoria no está regularizada. And that's a difficult circumstance. Y es una circunstancia muy difícil. Your lawyer will discuss that with the prosecutor. Su abogado hablará con el fiscal. And we'll address this again on April 9th at 9 a.m. Y este, abordamos esto nuevamente el 9 de abril a las 9 de la mañana. Anything further, Mr. Crane? Algo más, licenciado Crane. Nada. All right, Senor Lopez, you're good to go. Señor López, ya se puede retirar de la llamada. Sí, gracias. Thank you. Vivian, I think that's the only case we have for you this morning. Is it as far as you know? Yes, as far as I know, that's what I have, and that's it. I thought, okay, uh, Cody's disconnected. All right, uh, thank you for your help. No problem. Have a good day. Thank you. Howard, I'm plowing through cases here. I don't know what I've got for ordinance violation. I'm going to do uh, Ryan McDaniel. All right. Yeah, that's an ordinance case. Mr. McDaniel, can you hear me? Yes. Do you have the ability to do video? Uh, not at the moment. All right, well, we'll do with what we got. This is file 21549 OD. Are you Ryan Adam McDaniel? Yes. Mr. McDaniel, you got a ticket in the village of Constantine on March 12th, same day as the other guy for operating while intoxicated. March 12th was a Friday. Uh, operating while intoxicated, in this case, is charged under Constantine Ordinance, but it's the same as state statute. It's a misdemeanor punishable by up to 93 days in jail and a fine of up to $500. Carries six points on your driving record and it requires that your license be suspended. Um, that's really all I can tell. Mr. Howard Bush is the Constantine Village Attorney. He is here. Mr. Bush, is there any plea offer here? I have not seen the police report on this one as of yet. I don't have an offer. This is one that I would suspect maybe it might be beneficial to appoint him an attorney for the defendant. Mr. McDaniel, that's what I was going to suggest. My suggestion is for your protection, you plead not guilty, and I appoint a lawyer to help you with this. You can also hire a lawyer of your own choosing if you wish. Do you have any objection to that? No. I have no objection. Mr. Mc... 
Do you still live on Schaefer Road? Yes. Schaefer Road looks straight on the map. It's awfully hilly. Yep. Probably the hardest road in St. Joe County to run on. Uh, what's your occupation, sir? Uh, I'm not employed at the moment. All right, I'm going to show you're pleading not guilty. I'm going to appoint an attorney. I'm going to set an attorney pretrial for April 16. At 9 a.m. Do you have a phone number? Yes. Okay, what's that? 269 816 0961. All right, Mr. McDaniel, I'm going to send you the information. I get people's phone numbers because they don't show up. I roused them out of bed. But uh, the law sort of requires it now in the Zoom world we're in. I'm going to send you some information and tell you who your attorney is that I'm appointing to represent you. I want you to contact the attorney and discuss this with them prior to the pretrial date on April 16th. It will be done by Zoom once again, and I want you to be able to connect with a video. I have a case recently where a young girl was convicted of retail fraud. She said, it wasn't me, it was my sister, and I don't have a picture of her. And um, she wasn't fingerprinted, so it's important that I can see you rather than just have a voice. If you need to, you can come up to the courthouse on that morning. At any rate, they'll get the police report, share it with your attorney. We'll have further discussions. Don't get in any more trouble until I see you on April 16th. Matter of fact, don't get in any more trouble after that either, but uh, you're... Good to go, sir. Do you have any questions? No. All right. Tanisha, I'm going to do yours next because you're making me dizzy. You're eating and drinking pop and walking around and I'm getting... Sorry about that. I'm a little... I'm a little... my eyeball. Yours is an old-fashioned regular file that we used to have before everything went electronic and I can't find anything. This oh, no. is file 182482, your Tanisha Jade Perez, formerly known as Tanisha Hostetler. Yes. I'm Judge Middleton. I'm the same guy that was here in 2018. You got a ticket for speeding and driving suspended. Uh, you had a lot of trouble getting you here. You missed several court dates, a bench warrant issued for your arrest way back in October of 2018, and you got picked up on that bench warrant and posted a $500 bond. Um, your case had never even been resolved. Uh, you haven't been convicted of anything. We appointed attorney Christine Yancey to represent you um, driving suspended is a misdemeanor. It's punishable by uh, a fine of up to $500. It carries two points on your driving record and it requires that your license be suspended. You've been sort of off the radar for three years, um, but your case has not been resolved yet. Do you want me to schedule this for a pretrial with your attorney? Um, yeah, I'm guessing so, so I can figure it out, because I wasn't sure exactly what was going to happen today, because it's been so Well, long. where have you been for three years? Um, I, at home, trying to stay out of trouble. <laughs> How did you get picked up on the bench warrant? Um, I was just, <coughs> I was in a, I was riding with somebody 
and they got pulled over in Indiana and they asked for everyone's information. So then they had the cops waiting on the border of Michigan to pick me up and pulled us over. <laughs> That's what we used to call a midnight extradition. They would drive you to the border and have you walk across <laughs> and uh, get picked up on the other side. I haven't seen it for a while. They didn't tell me it was going to happen. <laughs> You got midnight extradited to Michigan. Um, <laughs> uh, yes, it's not unlawful. But I just <laughs> ordered to walk across and you get arrested on our side. How long were you in jail before you posted bond? I posted it right away. <clears throat> well, let's see if we can get this case resolved. What, are you still on Lutz Road? Yes. All right, I'm going to set an attorney pretrial with your original attorney, Yancey. Thank you. For April 9. April 9. At, at 9 a.m. I'm going to. The, at this point, the prosecutor may give you some consideration. You posted a $500 cash bond. You spent some time in jail before you bonded out. And apparently you haven't been in any trouble in three years, although you just quit showing up for court until we got around to arresting you. Um, I had to... Oh, sorry. Well, so... I want you to contact your lawyer. We'll send you the information again and discuss this with her. We'll run Perfect. a new driving record and see what your status of your driver's license is now. Okay. Bench warrant is recalled. <coughs> okay. We've got a long memory. Uh, warrants stay out for a long time. We're here all day, every day. Usually people float down the stream, come back into the system. Been here since 1980 and eventually everybody comes back. All right, let's see if we can take care of this and get it off and back. So okay. your next hearing date is April 9th at 9 a.m. You're free to go. Thank you so much. All right. Midnight extradition. Jeanette, you know what today is? Uh, well, it's March 25th. And this is the day in 1985 that Linda Sue Van Busker came. Well, I that. It was the first nice day of the spring, and uh, Debbie Davis wasn't even born yet, but uh, I always remember this day, March. March 25th. All right, folks, we're still plugging away here. We still haven't figured out who Galaxy Note 10 is. Um, I can't hear you. Well, you're there. You gotta get your sound turned on. We'll get to you eventually. I'm gonna figure out who you are and be able to hear you. Mr. Washington, let's talk to you. I'm here, sir. All right. Um, there's more than one Quincy Washington. You're Quincy Darnell Kenneth Washington. This yes. is file 18125ST. You're in the same boat as the last lady we just had here. You had a ticket in 2018. You never showed up. We issued a warrant. You got picked up. You posted a $300 bond. <clears throat> and I have $300 cash bond. You're an Indiana driver. Uh, how did you get picked up on the bench warrant? Um, when you say bench warrant, like what exactly are you uh, talking about? I'm not well, sure. somewhere you got picked up here in March and had to post a $300 bond. Okay, yeah. Where was that? 
Um, that happened in Centerville. All right. Did you spend a night in jail before you posted the bond? No, no. They didn't make me spend a night. I just went and paid it. <laughs> well, Debbie, is there any offer on this three-year-old case? Well, I, I mean, I'd like to see his updated driving record because the one I have is from 2018. All right. Uh, Samantha, could you run a new driving record on Mr. Washington? He's an Indiana resident. I'm guessing we won't get a lot, but we'll run a new driving record. Um, Samantha, could you either run it and post it to OnBase or email it to me? Would you email email it? Then I can share it with Debbie. Thank you. Mr. Washington, I'm going to put you in the waiting room. We'll be back with you in a minute. All right. So, um, Mr. Huey was actually the very first person to check in this morning. Let's talk to him. Are you William Christopher Huey? Yes, sir, I am. I'm Judge Middleton. We've met before, but you're here today on a driving without a moped endorsement and careless driving. In Michigan, if I were king of the world, I would change this, but I'm not king of very much. Uh, you could drive a moped if I were in charge, but in Michigan, you need a driver's license, a valid driver's license to drive a moped. So let's see what you got here. You were driving a M60 in Schweitzer Road. Um, you were on a 66 Honda. So this night, it wasn't a moped, it was a motorcycle? Yes, sir. <clears throat> Yesterday at M60 Schweitzer Road, a newer tanker turned over. And I understand it's a huge mess at the bottom of that bridge, so don't go that way today. Um, Ms. Davis, is there any offer here? Uh, not at this point. Let me see. Uh, my internet's a little slow where I'm at, so probably figure out what I'm doing. He has another charge. He has a felony case. Um, I do. Well, maybe I'm mistaken. Let me look. <clears throat> Might have you mixed up. Um, I don't have anything except 2017. Well, the ticket says. Mm -hmm. No, it's not. Um, you've got a lot of baggage on your driving record. I don't know where I thought something else was coming. But uh, probably is safer to appoint an attorney for you. These aren't the most serious charges. Well, I don't know what you were doing carelessly out at M60 and Schweitzer Road. But my note said the suspected meth, so there is no Debbie. Yes, we've got the Charlie Brown teacher thing going. I can't hear you. We hear every other word. I think the video, the signal there from Colin's not working so great. But try again. I'm sorry. The notes say that there was suspected meth on him, so there yeah. is no offer right now. All right, that's why I wondered whether there was another charge. <laughs> Mr. Huey, do you still live on Riverside Drive? Yes, sir. Thank you very much. All right, what's your phone? 
I'm going to appoint an attorney for you. Set an attorney pretrial for April 16th. That'll be in front of Judge Patterson at 9 a.m. I don't know whether they're waiting for a lab report or something on the suspected drugs. We'll determine that. Yeah, because I have nothing on that with me. All right. Well, then I want you to contact the lawyer. I'm going to send you the information regarding. We'll set a pretrial for April 16th at 9 a.m. I won't be here that day, but Judge Patterson can April handle it. April 16th? Yes, we'll send you that information. Oh, okay. You're good to go. Don't get any more trouble till I see you next. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. I have Mr. Washington's updated driving record. Let's take a look. Uh, Mr. Washington, we got an updated driving record. Uh, that, and I don't know, Jeanette and Deborah, the driving records come in a new format. And uh, just like everything I've been doing for 40 years, I have to relearn things. But he did have a unpaid ticket somewhere and he cleared it. He is suspended in the state of Indiana. Uh, it says here, that's really all I know. He, he cleared up everything he had in Michigan, which is this. No, I'm not sure what that is. Um, so I don't know much. He does have an ID. Um, Mr. Washington, are you still an Indiana resident? Yes, I'm a... Sorry. <clears throat> I'm an Indiana resident, and the holdup of everything that I'm having is due to Michigan. So they suspended my license for the things that I had going with you guys three years ago. Well, yeah, it's this. You went off the grid. Yeah. This went as F FAC, failure to answer citation. So we'll be able to clear this up potentially today. Deborah, I've got three hundred dollars of bond. Your app will are allowed to violate the motor vehicle code. All right, that's a generous offer. It was cooperative. Yeah, most of that, yes. You're driving from Indiana to Michigan for college, um, so I don't think he had any ill intent that day. He was driving for college. That's what the police report said. The officer allowed him to get all of his belongings out of the vehicle before it was impounded. And his belongings um, were in the police car until he could ride. So uh, that indicates to me that he was pretty cooperative, and friendly with the officer. So I have no problem reducing it down to some. Well, that's good. I can hear every other word you're saying. So I just fill in the blanks. Uh, oh, Mr. Okay. Washington. Uh, she's agreed to reduce this to a charge called allowing another to violate the motor vehicle code in Michigan that carries no points, doesn't get abstracted to your license and won't affect your ability to keep or maintain your driving privileges. Do you understand? Um, can you please elaborate a little more? So I will right. have driving, sus driving suspended requires your license to be suspended. It will go on your Michigan and Indiana driving record. She has agreed to reduce this to a charge called allowing another to violate the motor vehicle vehicle code. Doesn't carry any points, doesn't carry a suspension, and won't go on your driving record. <laughs> get your license. So it's a pretty generous offer, considering you just went AWOL for three years. Uh, are you yes. willing to accept that plea? Absolutely. All right. Did anyone promise you anything to get you to plead to this charge? No. Or threaten you? No. So you were driving to college way back then in 2018? Yes. How much did it cost you to get your car out of impound? 
it was well over two thousand dollars to get that Wait. out of the info where did it go brokers and three rivers yes yes brokers and three rivers yeah it can be an expensive proposition all right well i've got enough money to cover what needs to be covered here there's a 100 dollars fine 75 dollars crime victims rights fee 50 dollars state minimum and some minimum fee which state of michigan puts on everything because they think everyone is rich um and i've got 300 dollars of bond there's a 45 dollar clearance fee to clear your failure to appear 100 plus 75 plus 50 plus 45 equals 270 dollars you got 300 dollars of bond you're going to get your balance of your bond money returned this will remove the michigan failure to answer citation suspension Yes. So you should be able to get your license. This is such a blessing. Thank you. Well, things come with positive. You got picked up. You had to post three hundred dollars bond, but it forced you to resolve this issue. So now, what you need to do is stop shooting yourself in the foot. Go to Indiana. Get your license squared away and you can live happily ever after not have to come give me money okay do you have any questions yes uh the only the only question that i have now is so 275 dollar uh, fee and and well i'd be going to the same place to pay it that i no, went for money you, are, you already paid it you paid 300 okay. bond so okay i'm gonna send you 30 dollars back okay um, so I like to hold on to money when I have it, but uh, I'm going to send your money $30 of the back. So, no, you don't have to pay me anything. Okay. All right. You're good to go, sir. Thank you. Okay. We're still plugging away here. Um, now, we still haven't figured out who Galaxy Note 10 is. She's tried to contact a couple of times. Ma'am, can you hear me? I can hear you. Oh, very good. What's your name? Ashley Johnson. All right, let me give you a name so I know what galaxy you're from. All right. Let me gather my files here. I've got Mr. Herman, Mr. Alger, and Mr. Jones. Ashley Johnson, Samantha Waldecker, and I've got Brian Ruiz. I don't have a Brian Ruiz. He might be from free trials. We'll see who he is. Good morning. Are you Brian Ruiz? Yeah. Did they send you here from the pretrial site? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Well, were you just in another room and they sent you over here? Mm hmm. Okay. Stay right where you are. We'll be with you shortly to figure out what's going on. Let's talk to Ms. Ashley Johnson. <coughs> Ashley Dawn Johnson from Galaxy S10 is here on domestic violence or domestic assault. Ms. Johnson, it's alleged that on or about March 12th, the same day the other two guys got arrested for drunk driving, you made an assault or assault and battery upon Travis Johnson, your spouse. 
That's a misdemeanor. It's punishable by up to 93 days in jail and a fine of up to $500. Uh, Ms. Deborah Davis from the prosecutor's office authorized that complaint. Ms. Davis, is there any sort of plea offer here? There is not at this time, Your Honor. All right. Ms. Johnson, how do you plead to that charge? Not guilty. All right. Let's get this squared away here. Do you want me to appoint an attorney for you? Yes. I'm going to appoint an attorney, set an attorney pre-trial for April 9th. That's going to be a very busy morning, but this is a DV case at 9 a.m. Now, I'm assuming there's a no contact provision. Who's in the house on Buckhorn Road? My sister, my stepdad, and my sister's daughter, and then my four kids and I. All right, so you're still at that house? Yes. So your mail will come there? Yes. All right, and the last four digits of your phone, 6491? Yes. Ms. Johnson, what's your occupation? Do you have one other than taking care of four kids? Uh, independent caregiver. All right, I'm going to appoint a lawyer for you. We're going to send you that information by mail. I want you to contact that lawyer. I don't yet know who it is. And make an appointment to discuss this with them prior to that date. We do have a special kind of probation in domestic violence cases, which could allow you to have this taken off your record. Um, and that Your Honor, be we would be consider discussed. that but I need to speak with the victim. Yes, uh, that's appropriate. So, Ms. Johnson, I'm entering a plea of no contest. Your bond conditions remain in effect. <coughs> Please comply with them. I will be here by Zoom on April 9th at 9 a.m. I'll see you at that time. Do you have any questions? No. I'm sorry it took us so long to get connected, but uh, we did finally get where we needed to be. All right, you're to go. All right, remove. All right, we're plugging away here. Uh, Laura, I don't know if I had the pre-trial for this morning. I don't have those files with me. I've got at least one person that's been sent over from pre-trials, but we're going to deal with the people we got. Mr. Algorand, good morning. Good morning. This is Judge Middleton. You're Michael Robert Algorand, file 21570SM. You got charged with having no insurance under the insurance code. It's a strange sort of statute carries a minimum fine of $200 and a maximum fine of $1,000. Uh, it has to be written on a complaint until a few days from now, then it'll be able to be on a ticket. Let's take a look at this. Darn it, it is on a ticket. Uh, we can't do that. Deborah, do you have any information on this? I'm looking at right. I guess we will put a complaint in. It says it's in screening for us. Well, would you offer a no proof of insurance? Let me look at the police report real quick. Oh, we also had metallic knuckles. Did we already deal with that, Mr. Algorin? No, even I don't even know what was going on with that. He just said he was going to put that in the report. They were in my glove box and I hadn't fully unpacked my car because I used to live in it. Um, all right, well, it's not exactly the crime of the century, but it's an old statute. 
it is a five-year felony or four-year felony to possess metallic knuckles. Anyway, we don't know much about this. Um, do you still have this car? Yeah, I got it out of Impound the next day. All right, how much was it to get out of Impound? $473. Well, I'm glad you got it out. That's after one day. Just imagine if it sat for a while. Yeah, um, you spending 300 on insurance. So do you have insurance now? Yeah. Do you have proof of it with you? Um, I have the Progressive app. I really don't have any paperwork for say it's in my car and i'm currently sitting in my room deborah does that affect anything you know your Honor, i don't even have a police report to review so if he can produce some sort of proof that he has insurance it would certainly reduce it down to just not have a copy of his proof of insurance uh, why don't you go out in your car and get it? This is messed up. The police weren't supposed to write this on a ticket. The prosecutor doesn't have anything. You spent $473, which you could have paid for insurance to get the car out of impound, and then you got insurance. Go out in the car and get it and hold it up to the screen, and then we'll come back to you here in a bit. So we'll take up another case while we do that. Um, Mr. Jones, you and your legal assistant have been waiting patiently. Let's talk about your case. This is file 21552ST. Are you still Robert Earl Jones? Yes, sir. And uh, who's your dad? Vince? I don't know. Who's your, who's your dad? My dad passed away. I'm sorry. I'm not, I'm not related to the to the gentleman. I thought maybe you were Miss Travis's one of Miss Travis's grandsons. Oh, she no. lived out in Jones. All right. Yeah, this I'm, is file. What? No, her. Well, she was a nice lady. Two one five five two S T is the file number. You're charged with driving suspended second offense. It's a misdemeanor, punishable by up to a year in jail. And a fine of up to a thousand dollars. It also requires that your license be suspended. And let's take a look at your driving record. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Herman, you're making all kinds of noise here. I'll put you in the waiting room. Um, let me go back to this. Deborah, is any offer here? The offer that's written in the file was a DWLS first, Your Honor. You had a bunch of driver responsibility fees, which were terrible, um, and they've gone away. But you have uh, $380 worth of unpaid tickets, no proof of insurance, and a driving while license expired um, from 2019. So you owe $380 worth of tickets that you've already failed to pay. Anyway, the prosecutor is offered to reduce it to driving suspended first offense. That's a misdemeanor punishable by up to 93 days in jail and a fine of up to $500 rather than 1000 It does carry two points and a suspension. What do you want to do, sir? Um, I, I still owe money for tickets. Yes, you have two. You have a no proof of insurance ticket where you fail to comply with judgment meaning you didn't pay it and a driving with expired license where you didn't answer so yeah you got a ticket let's see when and you moved off in 2019 for yes that was a long time ago and i I've, I've been paying like i paid basically i didn't pay like i thought i paid all my tickets off i didn't even know i had any more tickets or anything well, 
Let's see. Eight. You got a ticket on March 4th of 2019. 2019? Well, it isn't that long ago. Uh, then you never showed up. Set up a payment plan. Wait a minute. And then you quit paying. Let's take a look at the other one. I just had. They told me I paid it off when I was going to go pay it off every, I was paying every week. Well, it says you quit paying in June of 2019. You were only paying $5 at a time. Yeah. yeah. And that's well, that's like winning the crazy lottery where you win a million dollars, but you get a dollar a year for a million years. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that take, at $5 takes a, a, a month. It takes a long time to pay off $380. Then you just stop paying. <laughs> so anyway, those things are also hanging out. What do you want to do with this case? Do you want to plead to the first offense, or do you want me to appoint an attorney to assist you? I don't need no more. I just I plead whatever. I just want to pay it off. And I was supposed I had an appointment tomorrow to go to the Secretary of State about my license. All right, well, let's talk about that. First thing you got to do is pay off these tickets. That would That's clear you. Did. Well, you didn't. I'm sorry. You were paying $5 a month and then you stopped paying. So in some alternate universe, you paid these off, but in the one we're in, they're still unpaid. So you can, you can probably clear the decks to get your license back. Ms. Davis, would you consider adjourning this for a month to see what he can do to get squared away? Yes, Your Honor. I have no problem with that. I would like him to get his license. So if he's able to pay those tickets off and uh, I think it looked like his license is expired, maybe he needs to pay a reinstatement fee. Well, they were going to do away with the reinstatement fees. They did away with driver responsibility fees, praise the Lord. And... They're talking about, I think, April 1st, doing away with reinstatement fees. But you need yeah. to pay these court tickets, Robert. Yes, I'm, I'm going to adjourn this one month to see if pays tickets from 2019. And are you still on High Street in Jones? Yes, yes. All right, one month from now is that's I'm going to do farther than that because I'll be gone for some of that time. April 28th. <coughs> at 9 8 30 a.m how much how much do i gotta pay you owe 380 dollars according to this for an unpaid no proof of insurance 155 and an unpaid driving with expired license 225. that should clear your decks with the secretary of state to let you start the process to get your license back so we're going to adjourn this a little more than a month to see what you can accomplish in the meantime. All right, All right. I'll send you a new notice. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Laura, I still don't have the pretrial sheet I'm looking for on Brian Ruiz. In the meantime, we're going to keep plugging away. Mr. Algorin, did you go out to your car? Yeah, I got the two for All right, let's take a look. Uh, I don't have x-ray vision, but uh, I must read to me what it says is the it's progressive. Yeah, it's a certificate of no fault insurance. What's the date? Effective 317 of 21 and expires 917 of 21. Deborah, is that acceptable? Yes, Your Honor, that's acceptable. All right, very good. 
uh, in an alternate world, you just hand it to us and we would have looked at it, but we've been doing this deal where we try to see it on screen. Let me explain what's going on. You're charged with no proof of insurance. That's a misdemeanor. It's punishable by up to a year in jail. There's a lesser charge called, or excuse me, you're charged with no insurance. There's a lesser charge called no proof of insurance, meaning you didn't have that little slip in the car. That's a civil infraction and it's punishable by a fine only. So the prosecutor has agreed to reduce this to no proof of insurance. Okay. Defendant provided proof of current insurance. Fine for that is $150. Okay. And that's due within 30 days, civil infractions. Now, civil infraction is not a crime. It's like a speeding ticket or running a stop sign. It's punishable by a fine only. You don't plead guilty or not guilty. You admit uh, responsibility. So do you acknowledge that on the day you got this ticket, you didn't have current proof of insurance in the car? Yep, I acknowledge that. All right. Can you pay that within 30 days, which would make it April 26th? Yeah, I can pay you guys and Kalamazoo off in that time. All right. Pay me first. Anyway, that should help clear things up. Sorry, I had to pay 473. Hey, I'm just glad I got my car back. They wouldn't let yeah, me. I'm, I, well, there was a guy here earlier. He paid $2,000 to get his car back. And I see dozens of people in the course of the year that lose their vehicle altogether. Uh, I don't really like that whole process, but. Um, all right, you're good to go. You need to send that in. Are you still on Constantine Street? Yeah. Okay, uh, send that in by April 26, $150. The misdemeanor will be dismissed. All right, thank you. You're good to go. <clears throat> All right, we're plugging away here. Hi, hold up, Jeanette. Oh, I'm here, I'm, I'm fine. It's Mr. Auger and back. Uh, Ms. Waldecker, would you come back to us? Yes, sir. Good morning. This is Judge Middleton. You've been waiting yeah. patiently. Are you Samantha Renee Waldecker? Yes. You got a ticket on March 18th for driving suspended uh, improper plate and speeding. Let me look at this. I yes. tell everybody, if you're driving around with a suspended license, wear your seatbelt and don't speed. That is very true. And I actually did not even know my license was suspended until two days after this happened. I finally got the letter from Secretary of State. All right, well, let's take a uh, Deborah, do you have a driving record? I've got a base for this case. She cleared some things on 224. She had some reinstatement fees. Um, I don't understand. Um, I, these uh, new driving records don't give enough information, I think. Yes. Well, you and I have been reading the old kind for 40 years, and we understood them. This is brand new within the last week or so. And uh, they're hard to, but I don't, I, I don't even see yeah, the Yes? 
Um, the paperwork that I got in the mail from Secretary of State said it got suspended back in August of last year for no proof of insurance. Well, let's see what we got here. And I missed my court date through Branch County for that. All right, so, so you got a FA had a suspension from Branch County. Well, let's see. Yeah. Comply with judgment, right? Default. Um, I do believe so. Did you pay that now? I have not yet. Um, I need to contact them and find out what I owe them because I have not received anything further on it. All right, so you got this ticket on March 18th and you got the notice that you were suspended on March 20th? Yeah. I couldn't figure out why it took from August of last year until March of this year to be notified that it was even suspended. Well, I can't answer that. That's a great <laughs> Your Honor, I'm adjourning a month similar to the previous. Page. All right, Ms. Waldecker, the prosecutor is agreeing to adjourn this. We'll use the same date, April uh, 28th or 29th. To see if you pay off your Branch County tickets. Okay. All right, we got a lot of disruption there. I'm going to let you go. Are you still at Nash Road, Coldwater? Yes, I am. What's your phone? 517-306-3594. All right, I want you to contact Branch County and get that straightened out. You also need to get a proper registration this car. Um, right. And I have a question on that one. Um, I was just purchased it from my nephew and his girlfriend threw away the title. So we did the application for a duplicate title. Um, with that being said, since it is still in his name. Can he go there with a car dolly to the towing company and retrieve the truck? I believe, I mean, yeah. It's got my kids' diapers and everything in it. Where is it? It's at Bowers. So far, it's up to like $370 just from sitting there. Yes, you should be able to go pay the tow bill and get it if he goes to get it. Okay. Right. I'm going to remove the noise. All right. Uh, Mr. Herman and Mr. Ruiz will be with you shortly. I've asked about four times where the file is on Mr. Ruiz and I'm going to relief. Let me see if I can find it.
Well, I still can't find it. Mr. Herman, stay where you are here. Let me look for this other file. Hmm. Mr. Ruiz, I can't even find you in the system. Let me look. R U I Z. Oh, it's Ruiz Gomez. Can I have the sheet on Brian Alder Ruiz Gomez from a pretrial this morning? He's been in the waiting room and I don't have anything on it. I couldn't find the pretrials. And uh, so we'll come to you. Mr. Herman, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Thank you for your patience. This is file 20-89. You got charged with unlawful use of a registration plate. That's not exactly the crime of the century. <clears throat> I think you posted a cash bond, but I can't make any sense out of this. $21. Yeah, I posted po about a uh, week and a half, two weeks ago. All right, let me look here. I, I didn't even know it existed because I didn't get a ticket that day at all. Yeah, they did a complaint on December 16th of 2019 that you had an unlawful registration and they didn't give you a ticket. Um, you posted a $50 bond Oh, there it is. Uh, this is a very minor misdemeanor. It's punishable by up to 90 days in jail and fine of up to $100 plus costs. They allege it on December 16th of 2019, you were driving a vehicle without a proper title. What happened to that car? Uh, my, uh, my niece brought it to me and she never told me that, uh, the guy that it was uh, registered to was deceased, and I obviously can't make a de uh, dead man talk, uh, so I had to leave it in the impound yard because nobody wanted to get me a title so I could get it out. So the car got forfeited to impound? Yes, sir. Deborah, you have any input on this? Your Honor, we would offer allowing another to violate the motor vehicle code. All right. This is a strange circumstance, Mr. Herman. It happened more than a year ago. COVID hit. Your car got defaulted. You clearly didn't have a proper plate. But the prosecutor is agreeing to alter it to the charge called allowing another to violate the motor vehicle code. It carries no points, doesn't get abstracted to your license. 
the fine is two hundred dollars you do have fifty dollars of bond posted are you willing to plead to that lesser charge to bring a conclusion to this yes sir your honor because uh, he's by phone can you just uh, confirm a few things to make sure we're speaking to the right person yes that's probably appropriate uh what's your address mr herman uh, 213 North Jefferson, Sturgis, Michigan. All right. And uh, your date of birth? Is uh, January 28, 1969. All right. This is a very minor charge. How did you get picked up on this old warrant? Uh, I was at some. I was at a friend's house and didn't know he had a failure to appear uh, warrant. And an officer drove by, and I pulled out. and seen me pulling out of the driveway. All right. Did and they take you to jail? Or... Me and me over. I, pardon me. Did, did they take you to jail? No, he. Uh, and I ended up walking like two miles before I got picked up. All right. Well, I'm going to give you a $75 fine, $75 crime victims rights fee, and a $50 state minimum fee. That's $200 less $50 of bond that you have posted. You owe $150. Can you pay that by April 26th? Uh, yes, sir. All right. Well, this was a long, sad tale. Your car got impounded. The guy that owned it died. Um, you didn't know there was a warrant. You got picked up, all a bunch of uh, rigmarole for what it was. But you owe $150 or two days in jail by April 26th. If you need more time, contact the court. The goal is to get the fine paid. But that brings closure to this matter. I will send you that information, and I want you to pay that within 30 days. Okay, uh, do, do I go to the courthouse to pay it or? Yes, you can send it in or bring in green cash or pay by online. I usually do cash, I don't have a card. <laughs> All right, well, we take cash. All right, uh, the courthouse is open. You need to bring a mask and be careful, but we are open for some limited transactions. All right, you're good to go, sir. All right, thank you guys. You guys have a good day. Okay. All right, Mr. Ruiz, I don't know what's going on, but I still can't find anything about your case. I just materialized mysteriously. Um, all right, let's see what happened. I kept asking, and I don't think they could hear me. Allowing another dismiss the other two tickets. All right. Uh, you've been waiting patiently, and I do appreciate that. Are you Brian Alder Ruiz Gomez? Yeah. You got a ticket on March 3rd for driving suspended, speeding, and no proof of insurance. And a pretty sweet deal. The prosecutor is dismissing speeding. And I tell everybody, if you're driving around with a suspended license, don't speed. I'm going to dismiss the speeding ticket, which is 2190116277SI. They're also dismissing the no proof of insurance. Now, that charge is driving suspended. 
That's a misdemeanor. It's punishable by up to 93 days in jail and a fine of up to $500. The prosecutor has agreed to dismiss that for a plea to allowing another to violate the motor vehicle code. Ms. Davis isn't here. I think this was Mr. Johnson. All we have is her high school graduation. Oh, here she is. Uh, That's the bar photo, actually, but it's an old. <laughs> Yes, those are very nice. We all have one of those bar photos and I'm glad that we do. All right, uh, allowing another to violate the motor vehicle code carries no points, no driver responsibility fee anymore. It never did and it doesn't get abstracted to your license. It won't affect your ability to keep or maintain your driving privileges. Do you understand? Yeah. Now, it seems like a long time. Your pretrial was 8.30, and we're taking this plea at 9.40, so it took a little more than an hour, but all things considered, could have been a lot worse. I'm trying to look at your driving record here. You had an unpaid ticket over in Coldwater. It looks like you straightened that out, which is why they gave this plea offer. Yeah, I uh, right. paid the uh, the last court date that we had. I yes. wanted to go pay it that day. Okay. Well, there's a hundred dollar fine, seventy five dollar crime victims' rights fee, and a fifty dollar state minimum fee. Were you driving a car on March third here in St. Joseph County? March Sir, 3rd. That's what it says here. Is that correct? Is that the day I got the ticket? Yes. Yeah. And was your license suspended because you had an unpaid ticket over in Branch County? Yeah, I didn't know, but yeah, it was. All right. Did anybody promise you anything to get you to plead to this? No. Other than these other charges are being dismissed? No. All right, you owe $225. The other charges that were dismissed save you about $400. Speeding ticket was, I think, 110, and the no proof of insurance is 150, so that's 360 worth of tickets were dismissed. You have to pay a $100 fine, $75 crime victim's rights fee, and a $50 state minimum fee. That's $225 or two days by April 26th. Can you pay that by April 26th? Yes, sir. Do you still live on South Clay Street? Yeah. Are you employed? Am I employed? Yes. Where do you work, sir? Construction. All right, well, this construction season is about to start. All right. Uh, We've actually been busy all winter. All right, this is not going to show any points. It isn't going to go on your license, and you should be good to go. So good luck, right. sir. Thank you. All right, slow down, and you won't have to come see me. Sounds good. Thanks. All right, I have Clarissa here from Galaxy 520. She's gonna come in here and explain it all. Let's see who she is. I believe she's the victim for the 10 o'clock PV. No, it's Mr. Saylor, I think. Good morning, are you William Saylor? Yes, Your Honor. All right, you logged in on your own phone a while ago. 
Yeah. Um, whose phone are you on now? Uh, Clarissa's. All right. Is she there with you? Yes, sir. All right. Well, that hearing isn't set till 10. So I'll put you in the waiting room. We'll see you in a few minutes, okay? All right. Thank you, Your Honor. He's going to explain it all. Oops. All right, Deborah. Um, Christine or Jordan, our attorney in that case, um, have you had any discussion with them? I have not. I can reach out to them while we're waiting for the hearing. Okay, I'll see you in a few minutes. Jeanette, thank you for your help. Uh, I, uh, I do have a couple, yeah, no shows. We probably better make a record on here. Thank you. I thought everybody was here, but. Um, Leslie McGee. Jumped off the Tallahatchie Bridge and didn't oh, come yeah. this morning. <laughs> sure. Yeah. That's the only one I have of the no show, I think. Oh, Joe, Joe Burrill. I guess I missed yes. that. That was Casey Johnson, I think. Yes, well, let's do Leslie McGee, who's related to Bobby, Joe, <laughs> McAllister, no, Leslie McGee was busted flat in Baton Rouge. No, I think it was, I think it was Janice Joplin and, uh... <laughs> <laughs> no, Bobby Gentry. All right, anyway, they are failed to appear. I have no phone number. We will do a notice order to show cause. They are from Indianapolis. They're caught up in Final Four fever. All right, then we have Joe Vareal on a uh, driving suspended charge. I have a phone number. Let's see if we can. I I have. The notice said it went to his attorney. At least, at least I thought that's what it said. Let me look again. Let's take a look. No. Have you got any help on that one? V E R R I L L. Let me look. It's twenty one five sixty one. Is that the file number? I don't, I don't but, have an attorney in here. That's what I I had on the notice. Let's see. Yeah, the notice went to Casey Johnson here in Centerville. Casey Johnson's the prosecutor. Oh, duh. I guess <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> well, let's see if we can roast this guy up. Good morning. This is Judge Middleton calling from the court in Centerville for Joe Vareal. This is. Mr. Vareal, you're supposed to be in court this morning for an arraignment on a driving suspended charge, and rather than issue a bench warrant for your arrest, I thought I'd call you up. What's up? Thanks what's, for calling me. I am sorry. I didn't realize that you had for today. Well, today is Thursday, March 26. Do you have a pencil? Uh, I've got one. Well, maybe we'll just do this. I need a pencil. All right. Well, well, you knew it. We sent you a notice. Do you live at 151 Washington Street? No, I don't. I live at uh, 665 Grass Lake Road. 
Six six five Grass Lake Road. What town? In Fuller, Michigan. It looks like he has a pre-exam conference on a felony on the thirtieth. We could probably put it together with that. Who's the attorney on that? Paul Gibson. That's probably why the confusion, Mr. Verrill. You got a felony charge, and that's set for 330. This was a tag along misdemeanor. Um, all right, so I'm going to continue this to 330, which is next Tuesday. Okay. At uh, 9 a.m. I'm going to appoint attorney Paul Gibson on this case as well. Okay. Um, Your Honor? Yes? If I might, um, looking ahead of the record, it looks like the only reason he is suspended is a fail to comply with a, a judgment from Branch County. So that would probably unsuspend him if I'm reading the driving record correctly, and then he would be good until 2022. So. If All right, what you need to do is go pay your Branch County ticket. Deborah, what's the file number in that case? Oh, I don't have his new file. I have an open case for him 20-1159 SM from last June that doesn't appear that it was ever resolved. Well, I don't you know. got a lot of plate, Mr. Vero. Have you contacted your lawyer yet? No, not yet. Why not? I was going to contact him today. I've been busy working, and by the time I got out of work, it, every, the offices are closed. All right. Well, this needs to be a bigger priority unless you want to reside in the St. Joe County Jail pending further disposition no, of this. So you need to make it a little more serious. You have a felony charge, which is set for next Tuesday. And uh, the least you could do is contact your lawyer that we're paying for to discuss this with them. So I want you to do that today okay. and uh, we'll add this traffic matter and you could probably help clear your license if you go to the court in Coldwater and pay an outstanding ticket. Okay. All right. So this will be I'll with your other case. Today. All right. Very good. That'll help. And bring that slip when you go to talk to your lawyer or keep it so you can show it on camera. But your hearing on the 30th will be by Zoom. And uh, okay. that's where you need the pencil. I want you to write this number down. Okay. 905-646-0000. 3210. That's the Zoom hearing. It's on your notice. but. I will see you next Monday or next Tuesday at 9 a.m. Thank you, sir. Okay. All right. Thank you for calling me. Okay. I'm sorry that I didn't. Uh, I think I understand the confusion, but we got it now. All right. All right. Thank you. And this, the number you gave me is for the Zoom. Yeah, it's for the court Zoom. Okay. It looks like he is actually with Judge Patterson, Your Honor. Yes, but I didn't want him to feel bad. Okay. <laughs> Okay. So, so I told him it would be. Uh, anyway, I'm glad we called him. He's confused because we have a mix up on his address and he had a felony and a misdemeanor and no wonder he was a bit mixed up. All right. Uh, our next hearing is set for 10. I'm going to turn the recording off. I'm going to leave the live feed on. And uh, Jeanette, thank you for your help. I'm going to take these files out. I'll and, see uh, you next week. Okay, thank you. And Debbie, maybe in the meantime, you and Jordan can talk about our other case. Yeah, I will try to reach out to them. Thank you. All right, thank you.
certainly Jennifer Young would love to let you all you love to chat up. I just realized I just hit it okay. and uh, it was on all morning. I hit yeah. I forgot to hit save, so I didn't see it, but yes, I'm aware of it now. Good morning, Christine. Good morning. Uh, did you have a chance to talk to Debbie? No. She was your client is in the room. You want to talk to him? Yes. Look at that. Oh. Good morning, Mr. Saylor. Your attorney, Ms. Yancey, is here, and she'd like to have an opportunity to speak with you. I'll put you in a breakout room so you can talk to your lawyer. All right. Thank you, Your Honor. All right. Thank you for your patience. You've got a lot of birds out there. Now, I'm not sure who this is. Christopher Poole. I don't know where Daniel is. Should be here. Christopher Poole is logged in. Uh, which case are you here on, sir? I think I'm going to go ahead and remove the conference room. And I'm not sure where Dan is. Let's invite Daniel to join us. <clears throat> Good 
All right, we've been on the record just letting the clock tick, but we're here. We're ready for our next matter, <clears throat> which is a probation violation hearing on the matter of <clears throat> William Joseph Wesley Saylor. File number is 201993. <clears throat> Mr. Saylor was originally charged with assault with intent to do great bodily harm, aggravated assault, and domestic violence. He was represented by attorney Christine Yancey. He was placed on probation and uh, ordered to do a probation in addition to some jail time. Um, his probation officer, Daniel Frazine, filed a petition alleging that he failed to pay fines and costs, failed to serve a weekend in jail as directed, failed to abstain from the use of intoxicants, failed to test as directed. That was set for hearing on March the 10th. Uh, we were here on March the 10th. Defendant pled not guilty. <clears throat> we set a hearing and appointed attorney Yancey. He says he hasn't done his classes. He would go to the day reporting center and test. And uh, he wanted to continue with the probation. Uh, the hearing was set for today. Mr. Frazine has prepared a new status report, which isn't very good. Um, Christine, what's the status here? Thank you, Your Honor. I did have an opportunity to talk to Mr. Saylor, and he would admit that there was some confusion on his part about that last weekend in jail. He thought he had his days in. Um, he also would admit that he was not able to test when asked by the probation officer because he didn't have transportation, nor did he have money. And that's been the biggest struggle of transportation and funds for him. He indicates to me that his unemployment has now started. He gets that regularly before he was waiting for it to start. Um, he does get a check every week. He does have someone lined up to provide transportation. And he indicates to me that he also contacted um, for the anger management class and he was told he would get a call when there was a spot open that I don't know about I don't know how where they're at in terms of their classes. He will make that admission your honor, but he wants to continue his probation. Hello, Priscilla. We need Daniel for a PV hearing at 10. We're on the record right now, and he's not here. Okay, let me send him up there. All right, thank you. Thank you. Bye. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Mr. <clears throat> Saylor, do you understand you have a right to have a hearing on this probation violation where it has to be proved beyond a preponderance that you violated your probation? Yes, Your Honor. And um, if you wish, we could take that hearing and take testimony, or you can simply admit that you violated your probation. Uh, there's multiple issues in the petition. You were put on probation in October of 2020, and you haven't done very much since. Failed to pay fines, costs, and oversight, failed to serve weekends, failed to abstain from the use of intoxicants, failed to test. So have you ever tested at all since October 19th? No, I, uh, he, that, that's the one that he uh, wanted me to uh, test for, and I didn't have the money till the next day. Well, when I talked to you um, the last time we were here, I directed you to go to the Day Reporters Boarding Center and test. 
you told me you could do that. You didn't go there that day and test? No, I was going to I was going to borrow the money until I got my checks rolling in. But I couldn't I couldn't borrow it. Now I have my checks rolling in and I can pretty much pay for pay for all of it. All right. Well, do you wish to admit that you failed to test, failed to do the weekend as directed and failed to report? Yes, Your Honor. Daniel Frazine has joined us now. He's your probation officer. Um, Daniel, uh, we started the case without you. He has agreed to admit to the violation, uh, but your most recent status report is not very complimentary. No, he's basically not wanting to do this probation. Um, he doesn't want to test. And he always, like he told the court, he said, oh, I can test, I can test. He never showed up at the DRC, he never called me. I can't see that continuous probation would be a good idea. I even left the defendant a message that uh, somebody had turned in his wallet to the police department and they knew he was on probation, so they gave it to me and I have it for him. I said, contact me, I got your wallet. I haven't heard from him. Yeah. So. Well, we were here back in March. Uh, did he report for March yet? No. Fails to report for the months of March. As of 312, he's made no attempt to contact the DRC or this officer. Your recommendation states this probation has accomplished nothing. The officer has been more than patient with the defendant due to lack of COVID, lack of money, and or lack of transportation issues. The bottom line is the defendant doesn't want to put any effort into completing this probation. He's been dishonest about his willingness to complete jail time, about getting registered at the DRC for his anger management group, and about testing. It's at this point the officer believes that it's not worth investing any more time into this probation and it would be a waste of resources. It is apparent that the defendant does not want to do the work required for a successful probation. And originally, the defendant was sentenced to eight days credit one, seven to be served on weekends. The defendant only served five of the seven days and he did not engage in any of the anger management classes. Uh, so you're recommending 12 days. Um, he now has some representation that he's called DRC about anger management. This started last October. It's now March. What do you know about that? Um, when I last spoke to him on the 11th, he had not made any contact with him. So usually they're pretty good about telling me if somebody's registered. So talk to him I, on the 11th of what? Of March. DRC said they had not heard from them. Oh, so when you talked to minutes. them. So as of March 11th, he hadn't contacted the DRC. That is correct. And I just got off the phone with him and they ain't saying, we we're talking about anger management with other people and they ain't saying about him registering. Well, Mr. Saylor, we haven't accomplished very much. You haven't registered for the classes since March or since October. You haven't paid anything. You haven't reported. You haven't tested. And so, and you didn't report for all of your jail. So we haven't been very successful here. And Daniel says, why waste any more resources on this? Um, Christine, what's your thought here? Your Honor, here's a suggestion. Could we reset this sentencing for one month and see if Mr. Saylor is able to get registered for the class and he's able to report and able to get his testing done? He indicates that the, the money was the biggest issue with transportation. He now has a phone that takes messages, he indicates to me, which is a new phone. Um, number than what he had before. He wants to continue this probation and see if he gets his two days served that he still has to do in this month and come back in a month and see where he's at. Uh, Deborah, what's your thought? Your Honor, he was given the benefit of a very um, 
reasonable, maybe generous plea offer uh, from what he was charged with. And the goal was that he and Clarissa would be able to continue living together and do so safely. Part of that is completing the classes and ensuring that there's no substance abuse. Now, thankfully, we haven't had any reports of any issues between them in the last few months, but that still doesn't negate the fact that he hasn't done the classes. And if, if the courts to revoke the probation and give him 10 days, I, I don't think that we've really accomplished what, what we were trying to do with the plea agreement. And for what he was from the original charges, 10 days is, is not much uh, what happened. So I would ask that the court impose an additional two days for not complying with the probation, but continue the probation uh, so that he is required to complete the DV class and do the drug and alcohol testing. Daniel, what's your thought? Well, I'm willing to give it a, give it a try. But he has the two days he didn't serve, and then the two days sanctions. So that'd be four days. Yeah. If he's not work, if he's not working right now, he should serve that right away. Right. Well, he's all blow and no show. He back when I talked to him in March, he was going to do this, this, and this. I'll test. He hasn't tested. He hasn't reported. Now he's like, oh, I'm going to do all this stuff. But if we are trying to break the cycle of domestic assault, uh, the class is a key component to that. Uh, Mr. Saylor, what about if I just give you 93 days in jail? You could mow lawns in May, get some trustee time, probably be out by early June. What's your thought about that? <laughs> uh, Your Honor, I'd rather do, do the probation and get that done and over with. Because I actually think that the classes would probably help because I've never done those classes before. And I mean... Well, how about if you stop yanking my chain and do what I ask you to do? In fact, I didn't ask you to do it. I ordered you to do it. And you didn't do it. And when I talked to you before, I thought maybe we would have accomplished something between then and now, and you accomplished none. So let me repeat, the maximum punishment for this is actually a year in jail. Pled to aggravated assault. You choked her around the throat and the prosecutor reduced the felony charge to a misdemeanor. Um, all right, you're rolling your eyes at me. You're, are you asking me to give you 93 days in jail? <laughs> no, no, this no, is your Honor. no, Your uh, Honor, I'm sorry. I was, uh, I was doing that to Clarissa. <laughs> well, you're doing it to her and to me and everybody is watching this feed indicating you're not really taking this very seriously that you feel this is some big imposition on you and why is everybody picking on you? So I don't know whether I should make any more resources wasted on this if you're not willing to put in the minimal amount of effort. I don't know if you've been drinking every day since October, if you're using meth, if you're taking opioids, you haven't tested, not one friggin' time. And you told me you were gonna test the last time. So I don't know what you're doing. You're not working, you're not paying, you're not going to treatment, and you're not testing. So what am I accomplishing about zilch? Uh, they could use somebody to mow lawns or work in the kitchen at the jail, and I think that might be a good fit. So you need to get on the clue bus, buy a ticket. Uh, I'm going to do the four days jail, credit zero, as recommended by your PO, Daniel's willing to stick his neck out for you. That starts tonight, 7 p.m. on 325. He'll spend Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday night, Sunday night, and get out. Probation is continued. You can go get your wallet on Monday from Dan. I'll have security drop it off of the jail, so it'll be waiting for him at the jail. Yeah. <laughs> All right, thank you. All right, do you have any questions? You're still on probation. All the conditions are still in effect. You're to report to the jail tonight to do the two days you didn't do, plus the two days uh, for this. And test today at by 11. You can't. I don't, do you have any money? Uh, I can't. She, she don't have a car by 11. All right, we'll just do the jail. 
Um, she shouldn't have to pay for your testing since you're choking her. Uh, we'll yeah. figure something out. I'll stick. Uh, I don't know, but uh, it's a recurring problem. I really would like to know what's in your bloodstream right now. Um, there's, are any of the able to test runner with the mouth swabs? or urine screens. I know Autumn used to. I don't know if she has any tests right now. I say if, if she could test him when he checks into jail. All right, let's see. What I'll we try to get do. that arranged. I'll talk to Autumn. All right, um, that concludes this hearing. Anything else we need to put on the record here? No, Your Honor, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Right. Thank, thank you for continuing uh, the Thank you, Christine. We've got a busy afternoon with our last pretrial docket. Um, Mr. Uh, Mr. Saylor, I'll see how this goes. I hope we do a better job in the probation. Um, anyway, I'll see you this afternoon at 1.30. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. All right, I think that finishes our morning docket. Okay, we'll end our live feed.